Hey Josh, it's Tuesday, and first off to answer your question from last week, I'm not really sure what gives me hope for the future, um, it's kind of a, that's kind of a big, uh, a big, um, question to answer, I guess, um, but honestly, I'd have to say, um, my generation, or my area, my generation, um, since I'm apparently a Gen Z, um, a lot of people <clears throat> look at Gen, or at Gen Zs and say that they're like, oh, they're, what's wrong with the country, but my, I'm kind of in that weird area between Millennial and, uh, Gen Z. Uh, I'm technically considered Gen Z, as I mentioned, but, um, I don't know, it's kind of that weird area, but, um, but th this general area of, like, the early Gen Z, late millennial er era, or area, is probably what gives me the most hope, because a lot of people in this general area are, like, or, um, are the ones that are like, uh, oh, we have to make sure that we vote, and then they actually do vote, they don't say that they're gonna vote, and then not, mo most of the people in my area do vote, um, in just both of our general area, because we are kind of in that area of late millennial to early Gen Z, both of us, um, <clears throat> but, yeah, I don't know. It's not exactly the best answer I would do, but it's, I don't know, I, I don't really know what gives me the most amount of hope for, uh, for the future. Sorry. Um, but, instead of talking about the future today, I'm gonna continue talking about the past, because history, uh, is, as I'm sure you can tell, history is one, is my favorite subject, since that's what I'm doing for, uh, er, for, uh, school now. Um, and, uh, I think I've found my new favorite, um, interaction between state and federal governments, uh, in U.S. history, and that is the nullification crisis, because it's just hilarious how it went down. Um, so, for some background, uh, the nullification crisis was something that, or was something that came up during the Jeff, not Jeffersonian, the Jacksonian, uh, era of history, which is from, uh, Andrew Jackson up to, uh, Henry Tyler? the, uh, the vice president for the guy that died after a month in office that ended up being the first president to get into office, office without being elected into office. Um, so that's the era that the Jackson, or that historians refer to as a Jacksonian era, because, surprise, surprise, Andrew Jackson's, um, ideologies were what kind of carried through that whole era. Because, you know, historians are super clever with their naming by calling, you know, like, the War of 1812, the War of 1812, because, you know, it started in 1812. Super creative historians. Um, but yeah, um, oh, I got a different chair up here now, so you don't have to hear the squeaks all the time. Um, Anyway, that got off topic. So the nullification crisis was towards the middle, I believe, of the Jacksonian era. And it was, basically how it went down was that it was um, the states, or the, so the federal government would pass a law that, that not everyone liked, because of course not, it's government, not everyone's gonna like the laws. Um, and so the states ended up doing a thing where they were just like, you know what, we don't like that, get that out of here. And they'd write in their, uh, and they'd amend their um, state constitution saying like, basically, we have a permit to do whatever the hell we want. <laughs> um, so it, it, I, I just find that hilarious that I don't know why, but uh, eventually it did obviously cause problems and um, 
it was one of the first times that um, the states kind of came close to seceding before the Civil War, obviously when they actually did attempt to secede from the from the U.S. the U.S. government, and um, I just uh, I don't really know how where else to go with it, but uh, eventually. Eventually, it was stopped. They or uh, the federal government basically passed a law saying we're allowed to basically force you guys to follow these laws, and or they, these are the laws that the federal government sets. So you guys have to follow it, basically. So again, kind of an iffy area. Um, I'm sure a lot of those laws still exist, but we don't have problems with them anymore. Com er, debate, er, debate it, or er, then I guess that's able to be debated. Um, so I don't know why I find it so funny. I think it's just the fact that the states were basically just like, nah, get that out of here. Those laws are whack. We don't like them. <laughs> I hate myself for using whack. Anyway, um, but yeah, I, I don't, again, I don't, I don't really know why I find it so funny. I just do. So, yeah, uh, I guess that'll be it for this video. So, a uh, nice quick video, um, because my class, or my history class doesn't really complete, or didn't really go over too much in the nullification crisis because we had to fit that entire chapter in a day. Um, <laughs> So yeah, uh, that'll do it for this video. So Josh, my question for you is, what do you think is the funniest relation between uh, state and federal government uh, in the history of the United States? Uh, if you have any other ideas on what that is, uh, I'd love to learn about it. So let me know. Uh, so that'll do it for this video. So Josh, I will see you on Friday. Later, bro.